many times I go to the book of Ephesians because every time I read it my spirit man the inner man receive the sound doctrine the wholesome words that the Lord Jesus gave from heaven to the chosen vessel Apostle Paul for us okay let's go read Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God go and read Acts 9 in particular 9 15 where Christ said to Ananias concerning Saul of Tarsus which becomes Paul for is a chosen vessel unto me <clears throat> to bear my name to the Gentiles praise God and kings and children of Israel Paul and apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus these are not two categories saints are faithful which means they are full of faith they got faith saints means set apart so the body of Christ in Ephesus we are saints we are faithful that's how God calls us so if somebody calls us different it's not important what important is what the Lord says in verse 2 grace be to you and peace this is a salutation now we are in the dispensation of grace every time you write you open this letters of Paul God is telling you grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ it's glorious <laughs> now after this introduction he says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ can you see the Godhead here the God Holy Ghost Father God the Father our Lord Jesus Christ the Word the Son of God the only begotten Son <clears throat> sorry for there are three that bear record in heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost Father Word Holy Ghost capital letter because it's God and these three are one this verse 1 John 5 7 has been, has been removed from all the perverted Bibles because Satan doesn't want you to know that God is a Godhead three person one God not three gods one God in three persons so he said blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ now look at me oh Lord please bless me Lord please wait a second that would be a very ignorant prayer I'm asking God to do something that is already done I don't, I'm not English my English is very broken my pronunciation let's forget about it but has blessed us is a damn deal it's a past sense how with all spiritual blessings where in heavenly places in Christ I'm not a member of the 12 tribes of Israel I'm not under covenant no old covenant no new covenant I'm a, a particular a member in particular <laughs> of the new creature the body of Christ the revelation of the mystery so all my blessings are spiritual and they all in heavenly places in Christ I 
according as it shows in us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love wait a second jesus in his earthly ministry recorded faithfully in the four gospels matthew mark luke and john he was not talking to us gentiles he said very clearly in matthew 15 24 been sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he sent his two help to preach only to them the gospel of the kingdom. But now it's revealed to Paul from heaven that he has chosen Christ to form the body of Christ. But so we are chose, chosen in him. Not me individually, the body of Christ. You understand? In this dispensation of grace, God is not calling anyone with a special calling like Roberto, I'm calling you, I'll give you a vision, a revelation. God is calling all men and women to be saved and sealed by grace because that's his will in this dispensation of grace. He will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Religion doesn't want you to know this, but that's what the scripture says. So my responsibility and yours is to read what is written in the book according to the revelation of the mystery. According, chosen us in him, in Christ, so without Christ nothing happens. When? Before the foundation of the world. Try to imagine this now. God had his plan, this eternal purpose, before the foundation of the world. Nothing existed, but already had this purpose. It's called eternal purpose. That we should be holy, set apart, and without blame before him in love. Now I'm sitting here, but I should be jumping. <laughs> I can imagine myself to be holy without blame before him, before God in love. Because I know myself. Yeah, I know, but I know the old man. The myself in the flesh. That could never be holy without blame, without blame before him in love. It is because you're in Christ. When he puts you in Christ, that's how you appear in his presence. Holy? I don't, I don't know. I've got some special light on my head. <laughs> and without blame, before him in love. Nobody can blame us. People want to blame us. Satan wants to blame us. But they can't. Because God says that we should be holy without blame, before him in love. Why? He put us in Christ. You see how clear it is. According as he had chosen us. In him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, this should is not conditional, that we must, otherwise, or should, maybe, yes, maybe not, because that's a position that God has given us, so that we are holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us, so he's got us, he's given us a destiny in advance. Us, the body of Christ, and every member of the body, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. And that's according to the good pleasure of his will. You say, but Roberto, I heard this in other videos, you repeating yourself. Repetition helps. Repetition is the best teacher. This kind of truth, they need to be nailed, put deep in your spirit, man, because otherwise your flesh is going to trick you. Every time you fail, because you still fail in the flesh. Spirit of condemnation. Oh, man, I failed again. Oh, you know, that's the condition of Adam. We're no more in Adam now. 
God puts you in Christ, in the body of Christ, together with the other members, so you become a member, in particular, of the new creature, which is the body of Christ, which is a heavenly creature with a heavenly position, in heavenly presence, in Christ. That's what our blessings are, spiritual blessings, anyway. And why adoption? It's simple. We never had any covenant with God. I know that the denominations want to put you under covenant. Oh, you are under the new covenant now. No, we're not. We're under grace. Grace and covenant, grace and the law, they are diametrically opposite. They repulse each other. You can be, you cannot be saved and sealed by grace under covenant. So God had to adopt us. <laughs> and he did. Adoption of children. As children. But not because, oh, look. He, she, that's so good. By Jesus Christ. To himself. And this he did according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, don't you want to rejoice about this? You know, Paul says, Rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Let me ask you, my dear friend, how in the world are you going to rejoice if you live with the constant fear that yes, yes, I received Jesus, I accepted Jesus, I'm saved, but I might lose my salvation. That's crazy stuff, you know. I'm sick and tired of all these denominations. They want to put you under this tremendous fear that you, yes, get saved because Jesus did what he did, but then you have to keep yourself safe. Otherwise, you might lose your salvation. It's talking about eternal salvation. How can salvation be eternal if it can be lost? If I'm in jeopardy of losing it, I would be every day from morning to night, even during the night. I'm done. I can't rejoice. I'm going to go around mourning and, oh, man, you know, that's really, I failed again. No, 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 no. In fact, it says here, to the praise of the glory of His grace. So, you know, finally, praise God. Forget about glory in your flesh. Glory in yourself. Your attainment this flesh you know is satanism <laughs> it's devilish no this is to the praise of the glory of his grace but what is grace i heard somebody say grace is god reaches a crest expenses yeah not bad but i can go In the King James with the strong numbers. And I find this word grace. And I see that is charis in Greek. Graciousness as gratifying or manner of act. Abstract or concrete, literal, figurative, or spiritual, especially in divine influence upon the heart. And this reflection in the life, including gratitude, acceptable, benefit, favor, gift, grace, gracious, joy, liberality, pleasure, thanks, worthy. You know what? Gift. <laughs> Praise God. To the praise of the glory of His grace, gift. Of his gift. And it's a free gift. Ho, ho, ho. I know these people, free grace. I know that people, the flesh doesn't like this because if it's a free gift, I cannot boast in myself. I cannot go around playing the holy man of God. But that's the reality of the scriptures. This is the truth, the word of truth. To the praise of the glory of His grace. Thank you, Lord. Wherein 
he has made us, he who, God, has made us who, us, the believers, accepted in the below. That's the letter A of the alphabet of grace. Accepted. In the below. So, who's the below? Who is the below? The Pope in Rome? <laughs> Martin Luther? Calvin? The Apostle Paul? No, Peter maybe. Daniel? Amos? Habakkuk? Zekio? Zekio? Nah. The beloved of Jesus Christ. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, he said to Israel. At the baptism in water, when Jesus got baptized in water because he had to wash his sins away. No way! That's what they say. Jesus never sinned. Jesus was God in the flesh. And as a man, his nature it was divine because he was born by the Holy Ghost through the Virgin, fulfilling prophecy, Genesis 3, 15, Isaiah 7, 14, the Virgin shall conceive. The Virgin shall conceive the seed of the woman? Yes. By the operation of the Holy Ghost. So the Father of Jesus, contrary to what the perverted Bible says, was not Joseph, but was God, the Father. Jesus never sinned. I know that some people say that Jesus emptied himself of his divine attributes, and this stuff called kenosis is set devilish to the point of no return. <laughs> Jesus never, never relinquished anything. He was God in the flesh. In fact, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So it's not me accepting him. People say, you know, I went to church and I accepted Jesus into my heart and I made him Lord of my life. I accepted him as my personal Savior. Wait a second. Who told you that? Oh, you went to church. What? Well, it's a building. Ah, that's not a church. That's a building, bricks and mortar. According to the definition here, there are three churches. The church in the wilderness with Moses. Where was the building? <laughs> the church with Jesus in Jerusalem. And the church of the body of Christ with Paul. His people. Believing, according to different dispensations, there are only three churches. And we are part of the third one. The new creature. The revelation of the mystery. The body of Christ. So it's not me accepting Jesus. I go into this building. There is a guy that calls himself a pastor. Man. Or if it's a woman, pastoress. I don't know if you say pastoress. And they say to you, let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. And now no one looking. And somebody is already looking. So, already starts on a lie. We don't want to embarrass you. But we, do, we will. Come forth. Stand up. Come forth. Like, you know, Jesus cannot get you there. You got to come forth to make this show now, you know. Accept Jesus into your heart. Jesus entering my heart, your heart. Maybe this guy the, or this woman, these preachers, they don't know that the heart of man is wicked, desperately wicked. And God is not going to enter in that heart at all. Thank you very much. Rather, when you understand that you are the sinner, Christ the Savior, and you receive the gospel of grace by faith, by grace through faith, no works, God accepts you in the below. It's written here. I didn't write this book. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted in the below. That's Christ. Verse 7. 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So we have redemption, not through our prayers, fastings, going to church, paying tithes, works of all sorts, of any sorts. And the other day I helped a little lady to cross the road. And when we came to the other side, the lady said, thank you, young man. Well, young man. But I didn't want to cross the road. <laughs> so I have to take it back. No, that's a joke, you know. Never happened to me. It's a joke. But the reality is this. You think you're really good. Or that you can become good. That's another trick. That you can change. You can reform yourself. And give yourself a set of rules and regulations which you're going to break. Show as the sunshine. And by that, God is going to accept you because of your integrity. And your faithfulness to those commitments. Just wait a while. You will fail. But if you give up, you don't even try anymore. And you just believe what Christ has done. It saves you because he died for your sins, was buried, rose again for your justification. God accepts you in the beloved and he tells you that you are redeemed, we are redemption, through his blood. And that's called the atonement. Book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 11. And only so, I will also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Atonement starts with A. Accepted in the below. We receive the atonement, another A of the ABC of grace. Accept, atone. Bless, complete in Christ. Colossians do that. So let's go back to Ephesians in chapter 1. And let's go back here. In whom we redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So, why do they say to you, when you sin, straight away, go and confess your sins. As for forgiveness, Jesus is going to forgive you. Because they deny that all our sins, they're already forgiven. So once again, they give you another gospel. Once again, they propose to you another Jesus, and of course, another spirit. They're yeah, just like the Galatians. They were doing this. And Paul says, hey, 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 if you do this, you'll be under the curse twice. You're cursed. No, don't, don't do that. You want to be blessed. So once you believe and receive, you are saved and sealed. You accept, blessed, and complete. And this is because of the blood of Christ. You receive forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1 7. You see this verse? Go to the book of Colossians. Go in chapter 1, go in verse 14, look what's, read, what is written here, <coughs> I don't know what's going on this morning, ah, my old age is really setting in fast, you know we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, same verse, in another letter, it seems to me that God wants us to know this, Yes, indeed. <laughs> and go in chapter 2, in verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, as he quickened together with him, having forgiven all trespasses, having forgiven you all trespasses, 
blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing to its cross. Now, can you say to the glory of God, praise be to God, because of Christ, God has accepted me in the beloved, has blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am complete in Christ, Colossians 2, then, let's go there. And you are complete in him, which is the end of all principality and power. I'm circumcised with the circumcision of Christ, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands, in putting off the body or sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. I'm buried with him in baptism. No water is a fraction of the Spirit. All my sins, past, present, future, are forgiven. So practically, today, the 6th of March, 2024, I personally, I, I can tell you, I am accepted in the Beloved. It's by grace. Not because I've done anything good. Good. <laughs> I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I'm buried with him in baptism and operation of the Spirit. The Spirit of God has baptized me for the sake of identification. Read it again. The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, has baptized me into the death of Christ. What are you talking about? There is no water, man. No, you know. There's so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. That's the second baptism of Christ on that cross. ABC. God is wonderful. Salvation is a free gift of God. I stop. Today I stop here. Okay. <laughs> Just believe. And receive the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the cross. Be saved, be sealed, okay? What is that? How the Christ died for our sins, including yours, according to the scriptures. And he was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scripture. You, you believe this? You are saved and sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the first possession. And to the praise of his glory. All is done is for the glory of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Salvation is of the Lord. I got to saw. <laughs> Have a great day.